Nokia tutorials from Nokia HQ. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna show you how to set cookies um, using our cookies uh, browser cookies plugin, um, and that allows you to do a wide, uh, um, yeah, wide range of things. Um, but before we're going to start, let me just explain to you a bit what cookies are and um, how they work and why they are so useful. Um, so as you can read here, so basically cookies are small pieces of information that you can save on a browser of a specific user. Okay, um, and this has the great benefit that um, a completely unauthenticated or a user that is not logged in that is completely anonymous to you. You can still um, save data about this user that you can then use for his next visit. Okay. Um, because this data is saved within the browser of the specific device, um, if the video, if the user then comes back, um, you can read this data again, even if you don't know who the user is, what his email address is, and so on and so forth. So obviously, Bubbles user data feature is, is helpful. If you have users authenticated and they're logged in and then they save something, you can save that to the database. But cookies um, are useful if you um, if you don't know the identity of your user and you still want to save information and they actually allow you to greatly, greatly enhance the user experience. So we're going to first of all show you um, just a general um, way to set up the plugin. And then we're going to show you a very simple example of how you would use something like this in a real real life um, application. So. Let me just delete this text here. Okay, what you will need is our browser cookies plugin looks like this. Um, uh, made by Anticode, which is us, um, relatively simple plugin. And we have an element which is called cookies and we have three actions, create, read and delete. Um, quite straightforward, but what you want to first always do is add the cookies element to your page. Okay, let me just add a title here. Cookies, okay. Um, and now you have access to all the different actions. Okay, so let's just add a button here. Okay, and this button, let's just call it create just to show you and then start at a workflow. And as you will see now under element actions, you will have access to the three different actions, which is create a cookie, read a cookie and delete a cookie. Let's start with create a cookie. So when this is triggered, a new cookie will be created on the current user's device or the current user's browser to be more precise. Uh, precise. If a user accesses with your application Google Chrome, a cookie will be created there. If for any other reason, he will then open Safari next time, the cookie won't be there. It is saved uh, per browser. But I mean, in most cases, um, the user doesn't change browser that often. Okay. So we have then the name, the value and the expiration field. Okay. The name is simply the, um, yeah, basically the name of the, uh, the cookie that you want to give it um, just for you for uh, identifying purposes. So let's say you want to save the user's IP address, um, or like that's maybe a bad example. I don't know if that's allowed to be honest, but let's say you want to save the user's um, preference dark or light mode, um, the user's preference um, language. Okay, Let, let's actually do language. Okay, so the user's preferred language. So this is the key of this cookie, the name of this cookie. And then obviously, we can set a value for so for this user, Okay, that currently access, we want to set the value to French, okay, because that's the language you selected. Okay, obviously, you can also use, um, you can also use dynamic values. So let's actually do that. Let's use a drop down here. Okay. And let's just have a few choices, which is going to be French, uh, English, um, or let's say French, German, and um, I don't know, Russian. Okay. Um, and then we can say, all right, so a user maybe has done a choice to to select uh, his preferable language. We want to create a cookie. The value should be not static, but it should be dynamic. It should be drop down A's value. OK, expiration also, also quite interesting. You want to specify how much days should pass until the cookies expire. So cookies always have to expire um, or at least you usually want them to expire as well. Um, and here you can define that. So it's in days. If you want to set one, for example, this cookie will be valid for one day. And after one day, if the user visits again, the information will be lost and you won't have that cookie saved again. So that's up to you how long you want to save that. Let's maybe save that for 30 days. Okay. So we're going to create a cookie now on this, on this um, button click. And let's also go ahead and read the same cookie then. Okay. We want to click read, read language preference language preference. All right, let's start at a workflow. What we want to do, we want to read a cookie. 
and the name of the cookie you want to read is our language okay and you can check again what we call it we call it language okay with a small l that's important so let's change that here we want to read the current user's device browser uh, language cookie value okay now the question is well where do we have access to this value well you have access via, via the state of this cookie so what you can do for example you could add a text here below okay um, and this text will be the cookies uh, a cookie value okay and this cookie value will be set in this um, in this action here so when a cookie is read and the value is found the plugin will automatically set the state of your cookie element to whatever the value is okay so keep that in mind okay I hope that makes sense but if you read a cookie it will be saved as the cookie cookies value okay always keep in mind the state is the last thing you read so if you read a cookie and then read a cookie again the latest value will be um, um, shown or, or used okay all right so let's quickly just preview that and see if everything works out um, so just to summarize again we're creating a cookie that creates the language preference of the user um, and uh, we then want to read the, the cookie preference or the language preference um, for the current user um, that just created a cookie okay so let's just take a look at the app um, wait a second until it's loaded all right so we have an option of choosing the, the preferred language let's just say German here okay we're gonna click on create all right nothing happens or nothing seems to have happened but now let's go ahead and read our language preference all right as you can see our language preference is German it worked out fine now the, the important thing is this isn't something special or I mean we would have been able to replicate this functionality with lots of different things but now let me just refresh the page okay so for all other things um, this data will be lost now okay because how should the application know we chose German well it doesn't know because we saved the cookie to the browser it's valid for 30 days so the next 30 days if you read the language preference it will be German even though we didn't define it here right now so the cookie is successfully saved we can even in Google Chrome you can take a look at the certificates and cookies of a, of a website and if we go and look at cookies we will actually also find that here um, let's try to find out emoji rating that's the name of this app cookies and your language the language cookie field is um, yeah is defined for the current device and we have it set as German okay and the last thing also quite simple is if you just want to delete a cookie for any reason you just um, go ahead and you click uh, create this workflow you say all right i want to delete a cookie which cookie again the name the value of the cookie which is in this case language and then it's going to be deleted um yeah okay so let me just remove all of this and create a quick example of how i want to delete the cookie element of how you would use this in a real life scenario so for example let's say um you have a drop down okay um and this is going to be search for flights two, okay? Let's say you have a flight search engine or flight search comparison page or whatever, okay? And if users come on to your page, um, the first thing they usually do is they wanna search for flights to a specific destination and they don't wanna sign up in most use cases. Let me just assume that, okay? So let's say you have some, you have some options here in New York City, we have London and we have Berlin. Let's keep it simple, okay? Okay. So user comes to your page. He searches. Um, he searches for for. Um, he searches for a value. Okay, for a flight to a specific destination. But what you want to do if the next time, and then you, most flight pages do that. If the next time, maybe then the user leaves your page. But then the next time he visits, we want to pre-populate this drop down to his last choice because if he looked for flights to Berlin yesterday, maybe he wants to look for flights to Berlin again today because he's planning his vacation and he looks for flights to Berlin every day, okay? And um, I think most flight pages do that as far as I'm concerned, if I remember correctly. And that's exactly what we want to replicate here. So how do we do that? When, well, when, when we click on search, we want <clears throat> to create a new cookie, okay? And the cookie name should be preferred destination. Let's just call it like that. The value should be whatever drop down search for flights value is an expiration. Let's just use 30 again. Okay, really simple. Obviously, 
in a real life application when the user clicks search well you create a cookie and then you bring him to whatever search page you have and then you allow him to search for flights we're, we're just going to skip this step okay and do nothing here and what we also want to do we want to say all right so when when the page is loaded we want to read the cookie for the current user and we want to read the cookie to see if, if if the preferred destination cookie is set okay and then we want to say all right the default value of this drop down should be cookie cookies a cookie value if the user hasn't set a cookie because it's the first time here and he never searched for a flight well then the default value will be empty however if a cookie is set this cookie will be the cookie value will be read here in the page is loaded event and we then have access here to the default value okay and then the user has this pre-selected here in the drop down so berlin london or new york city okay hope that's clear really simple as you see but let's take a look at that let's preview that and see how that works all right so let's try it. let's search for flights to london <clears throat> okay let's, let's click search okay nothing happens well that's what we wanted or what was the, the the point of this okay so let's just go ahead and refresh our application or our page so let's say a day has passed um, and the user comes back to your flight search engine to search for flights bam and as you can see london is pre-selected um, we haven't made no choice before but if we go again to our cookies we can see all right the cookie preferred destination is saved as London. And now every time, let me just refresh the page again. I'm gonna select Berlin, I'm gonna refresh the page. Every time we, we, we revisit this page now, London will be pre-selected, except we overwrite this again, you see London, by selecting a different destination. So let's search for Berlin. And now if I refresh the application, we should see Berlin as the selected um, destination. So let's wait a second. All right, works perfectly. Um, yeah, really simple to set up. And um, as I mentioned, great, great user experience. And you can do this for all kinds of things. Um, that was just a simple example, but if you wanna save different preferences, preferences regarding um, design or dark mode, light mode, languages, um, it really allows you to tailor the application to each user according to his preferences and then not forcing him or her to making a user account, which I think is, is quite important. Uh, depends on the application type, but for many applications, that's really relevant. So yeah, um, simple, but very, very powerful tool with this plugin. Um, just search for browser cookies by Anticode in the plugin tab. And um, yeah, good luck uh, building your application, bye.